good morning friends uh, this is the uh, second of our cams challenges in media online lecture series and today we have with us uh, documentary filmmaker adi ramani he's a great friend of mine and a very accomplished documentary filmmaker and his experience spans almost three decades uh, his first documentary was released in 1991 and it's going to be 2020 we are almost near three decades is coming to an end and he is still active and uh, the important thing about ramani is his style of filmmaking documentary filmmaking is something completely different from what i have seen elsewhere and uh, the unique style call it uh, in whatever name they he himself uses an impressionistic style uh, it's interesting uh, nevertheless um, from uh the among the very many films that i saw one of the earliest films that i saw in 2003 was niyange which was about uh, leather puppeteers and uh, the film believe me the documentary film believe me is about 2 and 1/2 hours and uh, i have a confession to make to even ramani uh, i was invited i went there i was wondering you know who is going to sit and watch 2 and 1/2 hour film let me give my attendance and uh, watch for a while and then probably i'll leave but then the film was so engrossing so engrossing that i think it was premiered in maxwell bavan the open lawn and uh, uh, the film was so engrossing that none of us no one in the audience ever left and when the film ended after two and a half hours uh, it brought tears to our eyes every one of us got up and gave a standing ovation to ramani and uh, that was a great uh, work you know the documentation of leather puppeteers traveling across south india tamil nadu kerala karnataka andhra and all that uh, and the thing is uh, you know he goes makes a film becomes a part of the community the nomadic community of leather puppeteers the reason why he made the film was that much before cinema came into being it was the leather puppeteers you know who were actually the visual creators the narrators and that is why he got interested and goes into it uh, but it also looks at the film operates on many levels uh, on one yes it's a, it's a kind of a documentary another one it's a social documentation also of uh, vanishing tradition and um, it's a very moving account uh, from that i have been watching ramani and uh, it has been a very interesting journey and recently he did the film um, oh that is banu again another interesting work which won a balakairasam award so ramani is going to talk to us on all his uh, films uh, his journey not every film he'll be able to talk to because we have a limited time and i'm sure there are a lot of people who are there to ask questions also um, so we will be uh, i'll leave the thing to ramani now uh, Yeah, no. So, Ramani, from now you take over and please, you know, talk about your journey. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the uh, what I found when you were talking, I thought there was a slight lag in the voice. You know, so I hope when I speak, it's sounding okay to you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hearing okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Anwar, for inviting me in this. Uh, facebook live this is my first uh, experience of facebook live uh, though i have been you know teaching uh, taking classes uh, with my students online uh, there is always this uh, you know presence of everyone around and a lot of things to discuss and so that kind of takes care of a lot of things uh, but a kind of a lecture looking into the monitor or looking to the camera is the first time that i'm going to uh, give i hope it's not a lecture which uh, maybe it's kind of a conversation that i can have with whoever is watching i don't know who is watching because i don't have any indications here um, so thank you whoever is here uh, basically uh, the idea is that spend this one hour time in a constructive way in a way where we all exchange ideas thoughts um, <clears throat> like anu said i have been star- i have been making films since 1991 but even before that i have been making films in the sense that i have been associated with many films as a cinematographer uh, my qualification is primarily a cinematography you know graduation from fti 
and uh, then i've been basically wanting to be a cinematographer and i've been working on many films uh, one of the uh, but as as i was working with many directors you know uh, doing one of the film maybe some of you might have seen is a film called kutti japan in kurandegal uh, which is uh, a film on the sivakasi match industry children working in the sivakasi match industry uh, <clears throat> so the children of mini japan that's the title in english uh, made by chalam benurkar who is from friend from bangalore uh, so that film uh, was the uh, one of the film that i've been associated as a cinematographer and also many other films so uh, by 1991 that's the time you know, i thought that i should make my own film like start start making my own films maybe uh, basically to understand that because i realized that there is a i film when i'm doing cinematography there is a certain instinctive way i work and i want to understand what is the logic of this kind of working and whether i can give it a form in a larger level because in filmmaking you know it's always a group work where there is a cinematographer there is a director there is a producer there is a sound recorder there is an editor you know sometimes all of them could be one like the way it is happening right now with me in many of my films but uh, but it is a, it is essentially group work and it is a nice experience of working as a group uh, but i was very keen whether i can find a logic of my way of filming uh which even sometimes surprises me uh whether i can give it a certain kind of a form or a structure and that maybe we can call it a film so that was the basic starting point and i experimented with this film called sa <clears throat> sa s a a that's how i called it there is no spoken dialogue in the film uh there is only sounds and effects and music and uh, all of that um yeah uh, so this uh, so that film is the first experiment film where it is uh, completely a personal you know whatever uh, <clears throat> and what how do you change this display into a thing this is a uh, share, uh, use share screen acha uh, share screen Next, yeah. okay. Uh, no, no. There is a Sridhar Ramakrishnan has written something, so I just yeah, I just posted the comment. Yeah. Okay, okay. You posted it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. So thanks for that, Sridhar. So basically, uh, to understand where I belong, but my first film was basically to understand where I belong, because I had just moved from Bombay to Chennai, and in a way, you know, one never thought that I will come and live in Chennai for a long time. uh so this is this it was happening so this is that i'm coming to chennai and living here because i want to understand and as, a, as an idea of migration as an idea of that somebody moves away from one's base which you thought is your base for a long period of time which is which was bombay for me and i thought uh, so that was a idea and i wanted to understand what kind of films i want to make what kind of form that i can give to a film and so this first film was became a kind of an experiment to understand basically myself and also looking at people who migrate who who go from one city to another city in search of jobs in terms of and settle down in another place for some time and again come back again go somewhere else so it is a it is a it is also a look at that and try to find a center in your own life where you belong so maybe what i'll do is Uh, i'm going to show you a few clips from various films of mine with sections just a small 2 3 minutes sometimes 4 minutes uh depending on how it goes uh, but let me start with the film sa uh, i'll show you a small clip from that just hold on i'll figure out how to do this yeah so this is the film sa <clears throat> Can you see Anwar? No, we can't see. Ravi. You have to share screen. Have you used share screen? It's not coming in mind. Okay. 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 I'm sharing screen. Share. Okay. Yeah. Now we are. Now it's coming.
Yeah. So this is the film Saha, uh, made in 1991, shot in 16 millimeter. Um, it's a three and a half minute long duration. Yeah, so that was it. Uh, yeah, let me see. Now, what I should do is leave studio, right? No, 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 leave studio. No, no, you are leave it. Keep the screen. If I, you can just stop. Stop the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is uh, how was it playing, uh, Anwar? Yeah, I went up well. Okay, great. So yeah, so. That was uh, the first film that I started with. Uh, it was completely like this. It is, you know, and it goes on to uh, a tribal population in uh, near Maharashtra, a kind of Madhya Pradesh border, and Chikaldara. And then I film a lot there. And then it comes back to Bombay, the local trains. So it's like a kind of looking at various kind of rhythms and trying to figure out where I belong. And so, yeah. So that, yeah, it is uh, Abrar though. I mean, it's been 30 years since I made this film, and I still don't know how to define this film. I mean, there is a synopsis that is written, which keeps changing also. Uh, I call it uh, looking at the flux of rural and urban rhythms. 
and uh, magnetic flux or i would say that looking for my own uh, space within a flux of magnet various rhythms that is rural and urban because what i felt was that the people from village migrate to cities and whoever living in city are migrant migrant people mostly and uh, so i was basically looking at that and what is the rhythm they uh, they find in reaching a place called bomb where getting into the train in the morning peak hours traffic just to get into a train itself is a huge relief you know that you belong to the rhythm of bombay so i saw bombay the local trains of bombay as a rhythm and uh, that one wants to belong to and uh, and that rhythm is created by people who migrate from uh, mostly in urban rural rural areas and uh, so basically trying to juxtapose these two and see a flow within the narrative and whether whether the narrative can hold on itself like this that was one of the attempt and since then uh, uh, what i've been doing is <clears throat> most of my films are search into something or something or other uh, because i was very keen on uh, looking at abstraction in filmmaking you know like in filmmaking like you can see the image uh, that i'm present in front, in front of mine it's a very kind of figurative image uh, so uh, i came in contact with a lot of painters and artists friends of mine mostly in cholamandal uh, so developed a lot of friendship and started looking at works very you know strongly uh, adi mulam is one of them bhagwan chavan is one of them uh, achudan is uh, one of them <clears throat> and many other friends uh, who were there and became good friends of mine so when i started looking at their work uh, very you know strongly and i also started wondering that this kind of suits me also in the sense that uh, you know how how to reach a kind of abstraction in, in the way one makes films but through a camera through a camera generated image so so that was one of the effort to do many of the films after that uh, it is like you go through a figurative approach uh, of a camera generated image but you ex you give an experience which is open which is not bound by any particular viewpoint but it opens up a lot of perspectives which i think is abstraction and uh, so that was the thing and then i made a few films with artists actually one with bhagwan chavan who was a friend of mine uh, there and then uh, then there was an artist camp in, in chennai uh, which is uh, a lot of important artists who had come here and also some international artists there organized the max bhagwan <clears throat> that that film also gave me a lot of uh, you know what do you call uh, confidence in terms of how to how to do films in the sense that that they, that you can do something which is completely different from what is generally expected from a filmmaker one can try out new ways of doing it because this film also is a very strong inspiration from the artists themselves who are filming because the kind of work they were doing inspired me a lot to create a work that is also i also feel like i'm part of the camp as an artist but my medium is filmmaking and uh, so that was quite a fascinating film it was called face like a man that film with the uh, artist cam uh, you can see the list of films that i made not many there are few of them uh, maybe around 2025 but ramani the ramani yeah how it's come yeah so that's the kind of uh, uh, effort that i was going through making films like this and uh, probably you know i will come to uh, quickly i'll come to uh, 2003 uh, which is when uh, anwar was talking about a film that i made which is actually one of the longest film uh, a longer film rather I, i made even longer film before that to this is 2 and a half hours long like anwar said uh this film was quite a journey for me because it took me about around 5 years to make the film and uh, i did a lot of research initially i wrote a kind of a huge script which is kind of a you think then tried to get funding for the film and then some support i got from uh, india foundation for the arts in bangalore then i also you know contributed a lot on my own and then uh, made this film 
uh, it's called niinge uh, in tamil it's niinge and then that's title where are you basically it's a film looking at shadow puppeteers who are living in various parts of the country uh, but starting from tamil nadu going to other places in tamil nadu and in other southern states and then come back to uh, tamil nadu that was the journey of the film uh, it is not online i have not put it online so far i might soon because there's some corrections that are making on the on the visuals because something has been spoiled so i had to rework on that uh, so this is a small i was thinking of showing two clips maybe there is a chance i'll follow a show one clip later but i will limit to one now this is a this is a place where near madurai uh, is a place called kadachanendal and uh, most of the puppeteers stay there and the entire community the families and other relationships they all stay there but uh, in that particular kadachanendal uh, there is only one dure raja rao who was there who is presently no more he is passed away uh, he was one of the puppeteers who was living there and uh, so i went to meet him and then this is a sequence of that particular village uh, in kadachanendal it's quite a amazing street and the kind of reception i get from them also so i will uh, show that sequence it's a slightly longer sequence than this one what i showed it's around 4 and 1/2 minutes long or maybe 5 but it's just see it it is it's quite nice to watch it and uh, so this is also anwar's i remember anwar was very touched by this film at the time okay so let me present this i do again share screen okay this is niyenge uh, a sequence from the, the film which is come somewhere in the middle of the film actually kaha jana wale adala bojhi tamil da nalla theri enna thoyil pannuvia kaha jana wale adala bojhi tamil da nalla theri enna thoyil pannuvia kaila pa ஒரு 
காலத்திலே அவங்க வந்த ஒரு டைம் என்ன ஒரு சூழ்நிலை ஒரு பஞ்சமாவோ கஷ்டமாவோ அதுக்கு பிறகு வந்து எங்கேயாவது இருக்காங்களா Raja Rao, uh, who is from uh, so that is the Dure Raja Rao who uh, was performing and he lives in the village. He is no more. His son uh, committed suicide. His daughter committed suicide. And the second daughter, third daughter, I don't know where they are now. So in fact, they are not in Karachan. In fact, you know, recently, just uh, two days back, uh, Intact is one of the organizations who wanted to help the, you know, artists, uh, folk artists, and uh, traditional artists. Uh, and they were asking me whether I can give a list of people who I know from shadow property communities. So I gave them a long list, and then uh, I was trying to trace out Ture Raja Rao's family, whether one of his daughters are able to find out or not. But I couldn't find them, even through other contacts. Also, I couldn't find. Them. So I tried to help out a lot of people and the names were given to Intec and they received some kind of, uh, you know, for pandemic situation, they got some help. But yeah, it's not enough. So, uh, but I still keep in touch with them, though I made the film in 2003. And I became, I felt like part of the family because whatever they are going through, I mean, I call them the original filmmakers, you know, even before cinema as a technology came in. Uh, that's why as Anwar said that's the reason I wanted to make this film to as an homage to this community, you know. And uh, whatever they are going through, that they are not able to perform today because the technology and the village lifestyle has changed. People's idea of uh, leisure and you know celebration or even you know excitement, everything has changed. So there is there are no shows. Uh, so I was thinking of myself also like as a documentary filmmaker and as uh, so the film is also reflecting on filmmaking itself, that everything passes through a phase and then 
becomes extinct. A style becomes extinct. A, a method becomes extinct. And then uh, something else takes up after that. And then it carries on. Uh, so I was basically looking at that as a journey in this film. So it looks not only at migration, because most of the puppeteers who are featured in this film are, they speak Marathi. Marathi, Marathi Kalanda Tamil, Marathi Kalanda, you know, Kannadiga, Kannada, or Marathi Kalanda Telugu. So it's a mixture of two languages always. Uh, but, and I speak Marathi also because I grew up in Bombay. So it is also a connection with my roots in Maharashtra and then, you know, all that. So, so it's that kind of a journey and also looking at migration, looking at art forms and survival, everything. So it's a, it's a very uh, long journey in this film. So, Maybe very soon I'll put it on the online. So, but before uh, I move further, I don't want to go in a linear order. I will come back to a film which I made uh, in 1997. A film on uh, this film actually started uh, trying to understand what is this quality of surrender. You know, uh, why we create people or gods or any icons or any kind of thing where we have to surrender, where, where we feel we have to surrender. Because I think uh, surrendering is one of the biggest uh, act, if it can be done. I mean, it's an, almost an impossibility. I don't know anybody in my this uh, this thing was uh, who I feel have done it. Uh, but it is it is an act that drives people towards you know creating a people and creating gods and you know the feeling of surrender. Um, so I was started. I started this film on that basis. <clears throat> because I saw uh, why Gopala Swami, why Ku, uh, jumping into elect elections as an independent candidate, not as an independent candidate, but another he broke away, broke away from the DMK party and he started his own MDMK. And then there was a huge rally and that rally I saw in film and that gave me this idea that I want to make this film on the idea of uh, surrender or uh, creating a god, creating a leader. So that's how it started. And then it became a film on Mailapur elections. That was uh, all the parties contested. And I just want to show from that film. It is shot in nine, around 96, 97, I think. And uh, a small section where I look at the same idea and how a symbol is also used, appropriated. The leader is also used, appropriated. And, uh, and but still we create real leaders. And, all that. So this is just a one small section I want to show from that film. Uh, the image quality is not so great, uh, but I don't know what to do because all this uh, transfer back from the original tapes and all costs a lot of money. And then uh, I just stay away from it. Yeah. So this is again, I'm sharing screen and uh, share screen. Okay. Then, okay. This film is called Our Symbol. Uh, it's also uh, in Tamil, it's called Namadha Sinam. That's how I titled it. Uh, so, I'm 
That was a se sequence from uh, where Jayalalitha is uh, coming to the constituency. And uh, uh, yeah, so I filmed this entire uh, ritual of preparing for a leader who wants who will be coming to that constituency. And I did the whole filming. And this is just one, the first section of that sequence. Uh, and also you can see how, how the need of the leader is important for the people, you know, in the sense that there is a celebration around it. There is a power around it. There is an appropriation around it. And uh, so it is a very complex kind of a situation. And I was trying to look at all that in the film. Uh, so if you see the film, it will just go from series to one person to another person, one leader to another leader. But essentially, it kind of creates a certain kind of narrative of uh, what is all this about, you know, this uh, kind of thing. And uh, let me come back to, um, uh, yeah, because uh, I was looking at migration and in the Shadow Puppeteer film, and also the first film that I was making is also about uh, what, how to how to function in a, in a complex flux of people moving from one place to another, even mess, myself. Uh, so this is a film that I made uh, in a few, many years back, but. I don't show this film anywhere, but I'm going to show a small clip from this film. Uh, I show this film only in places where I do workshops, uh, sometimes to my students, uh, but it is not publicly screened as yet. Uh, so this, this is the half an hour film, but I'm going to show you a very small clip from this film. Uh, this is based on uh, children who are brought to the remand home in Chennai. <clears throat> they are caught by the police in the railway stations. Uh, either seen, you know, without uh, anybody, or yeah, they just catch children and bring them here. Uh, so, suspected of uh, child labor or child suspected of kind of some kind of other key, kind of deals. So, this is just a small clip from that. So I'm sharing screen. So this film is called Mera Gaave Bombay. In Hindi, it's called Mera Gaave Bombay. It's a Tamil English translation will be My Village is Bombay. और मेरे पापा का नाम है दालूरी और मैं हैदराबाद से आया मैं हैदराबाद से आया और मेरा घर है बॉम्बे और मैं मैं वो मैं तो मैंने आया तो तो मैं आप कर लेंगे मुझको कर लेंगे पुलिस ने Okay. 
मैं रो रहा था वो हाँ तो जगह रो गया मैं उधर एक स्टेशन पे रोया मैं पकड़ लिया तो यहाँ रोया उसमें और उधर रोया फिर रोया तो अभी यहाँ कैसा है कितना दिन हुआ तुमको मालूम नहीं मालूम अभी तुमको यहाँ कैसा लग रहा है मेरा नाम है सनी मैं बनारस से आया तुम्हारा नाम सलीम बनारस ट्रेनों में खोकर ट्रेनों में खोकर ट्रेन में खोकर ट्रेन में खोकर चेन्नई स्टेशन पे आया तो पुलिस पकड़ ले चेन्नई स्टेशन में पुलिस पकड़ ले घर में कौन सा है घर में हमारे पापा मम्मी है घर में हमारे पापा मम्मी है क्या नाम है उनका क्या करते हो हमारे पापा का नाम है सिकंदर और मम्मी का नाम है सतीश जी ट्रेन जर्नी कैसा था ट्रेन में तुम जब आ रहे थे चेन्नई की चेन्नई Even where wherever they are coming from, they don't have address, they don't have phone numbers, and uh, how do you send back these people to where they come from? Uh, they are caught basically on the pretext that, uh, yeah, they are basically caught on the pretext that they are they are in the child labor traffic, <clears throat> so the states can catch them. Uh, but anybody is caught, and sometimes even uh, neighborhood boys and girls are also caught, and then there's a huge struggle how they kind of have to be released. From the remand homes, so it's a story about that, and the film ends actually where, you know, uh, where many of these boys who come from Bihar, UP, and Rajasthan and uh, Madhya Pradesh, now many of them are being sent back in a train with a police escort, and uh, so that's where I end the film in the in the Chennai railway station where uh, these people are just sent back, and most of them do not know what their flight is going to be because uh, they have not. some of them made contacts with their parents some most of them have not made any contacts with anybody <clears throat> but they are sent back to their places so yeah so it's kind of reverberates in what happening today in the sense so it's one of the reason maybe i thought of this film today and uh, and also i realized that while putting the list today for what i could present today i realized that it is all going towards the aspect of migration so let me look at uh, anwar can i take one more clip, clip? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So this is a film I made uh, with another uh, colleague of mine, I would say, or a filmmaker friend of mine, uh, a senior to me, uh, but uh, somebody who is made a big name in uh, documentary filmmaking and is an also an activist. He calls himself an activist and then a documentary filmmaker. His name is Anand Patwardhan. So I made a film with him. Uh, it's a kind of uh, jugal bandi, I would call it, uh, from my side. But I don't know whether he thinks like that, but my side it is jugal bandi with him and uh, so i'll show a small clip again there is aspect of uh, migration in this also just watch this <clears throat> sharing screen sharing screen yeah Yeah, the film is called Hindustan Amara. It's a 98-minute film long, which based on Anand Padwardhan screening events. Where where we go and screen the film, I filmed it that place. Yeah. <laughs> Say this. Oh. Oh. 
So that's the film called Hindustan Hamara. Uh, it's a kind of a, a critique on the nation in a certain way. Um, yeah. So yeah. So uh, I'll stop here uh, with, uh, with the selection of a few of the films. Uh, Anwar, if you want to take on or from here, maybe you can do that because I don't think we have much time left. Yeah. yeah. No, we can increase the time. Okay. Uh, one is that um, what I liked about, I mean, I'm just going back. I want to inter interrupt in between, but I didn't want to do it. I want to keep the flow. Uh, about Niyenge was that, you know, Ramani, when he made the film, it was, I think it was done over a period of time. It was not just quickly in a year or so. And he goes and shares the material with the people whom he has filmed. Uh, and uh, there is a moment when they are all watching. You know, all of these people are watching the film, the leather puppeteers, the family, all these people are watching the film. And, uh, you know, I think they are also reminiscing about their past, their times, their happy times, glorious times and all that tears flowing in their eyes. Uh, you know, that is something that I liked about Ramani, you know, filmmaker who is also honest, you know, who empathizes with the subjects and deals with it. 
and uh, is confident enough to show it to the subjects. You know, there, you also have filmmakers where it is problematic. You know, once you finish, you know, you, they don't want to show it to the subjects. So that way, that association, I'm glad that it's still continuing in the COVID situation also. That Ramani is continuing that association with the help of Intact and uh, the people are. So that is a it's a lifelong involvement as a yeah, filmmaker, it's not just one. Uh, now, one question that I want to ask, and there are a few other uh, Vincent asked question, is that Ramani, when you started in 1991, uh, you would have used a 16 mm camera, Ariflex, which was very bulky, and I'm sure those days you would have used probably focus pullers. Uh, you know, those days probably focus pullers were involved. But today, now I see. I mean, probably you'll be showing. Oh, that. Uh, oh, it's Banu. Uh, in that, and I increasingly see, you know, you handling the camera on your own, um, and uh, what we call as NG shots. You know, here and there, the focus you know, is not exactly paramount, very important for you in the film. Now, you can see here and there the focus shifting and all that. You don't. I don't think you use gimbal. You know, you're not bothered about that. Uh, but still, you know, it holds. The thing is, you are very confident about your craft, about the subject. The content, you know, that probably holds a film. Can you tell about you know, how this shift? It would have been difficult for you to move from Ariflex, uh, in the sense using a focus puller. I don't know whether you're using a focus puller at that point of time or you're trying to innovate. Uh, how has been the technological shift do it for you? Has it democratized? Has it made it very easy for you to do filmmaking? Yeah, it has never bothered me, this kind of shift. You know, though I have worked in almost all the formats. Uh, from 16 millimeter to 35 millimeter, and then uh, all the video formats starting from you know umatic low band, high band, in one inch recorders, in the, every format I have worked on, but it has uh, never been a, a problem for me because each format creates a certain kind of texture. It is like buying, say, different kind of papers in, the, in a shop, in a stationery shop, and then decide how to work with that. You know, it is almost like material. It, I treat it as a material, and that material allows a certain kind of functioning, and I work with that. So it is uh, like if you're working with 35 millimeter film, it creates its own agendas, and you know, uh, as you said, the cameras are slightly different, and then you, as you said, you need you need a focus puller if you're using certain kind of lenses, and uh, yeah, the entire parapanelia, the huge tripods, and especially fiction films, you know, uh, in in documentaries uh, when you are looking at real situations where the direction is only about yourself you are only directing yourself rather than the other that i think that is one of the big difference between the documentary and fiction filmmaking where in fiction filmmaking you are all the time directing the other while in the documentary you are only directing yourself and you are with the people you want to film with so that is one of the and it's a there's a lot of consent is required you know in documentary even in fiction film is also Though you sign up an actor for a particular scene or a particular role, there is still a certain consent is required in terms of that you cannot do certain things with that actor uh, or certain has to be within a certain kind of a agreement. Even in the, the non-fiction film, which is what I mostly do, um, there is a consent required, and the technological uh, shift I only treat them as material, and it has never bothered me. In fact, most things, most of the films are films which are not funded. Uh, which I have started only because I want to make a film. I felt that there is a film possible, uh, so I don't I don't go around asking for funds because it's too late already. Uh, there is no written concept written, nothing like that. So I just start and then go ahead. And then uh, you are not very confident in terms of how to define this film because I don't want to define it at this stage. I would rather see what kind of film comes out. So if you propose to anybody saying that this is the kind of filmmaking because that becomes a commitment and it's very dangerous for me, you know. Uh, so I thought, you know, the people who want to commit financially, they are also in a risky position for working with me. So that is one of the reasons I just do it on my own and go ahead. So yeah, in terms of lensing, the choice of lensing, for example, if you are working with 50 mm lenses or wide angle lens, most of the time the focus pulling you can manage, uh, but you are working with very choreographed situations, uh, slightly longer lens, a telephoto lens, or something like that. So there, you need a focus puller. Uh, it's difficult to do it on your own. Uh, but the situations that I choose are all advantageous to me. 
working as one man crew or maybe two two people three people crew so yeah i had worked with larger crews i worked with one or two members i worked with one member as, assisting with me or sometimes just on my own most of my recent films are all just on my own and i i work in the area where i can function so it is not that i go i can do everything but i choose things that i can function on my own yeah it's all and in your latest uh, film, i mean uh, oh it is banu there is uh, she is banu rao is again and again asking you the question you know number of times what do you do what do you do i remember this you know famous uh, i don't know whether it happened but this anecdote uh, in tamil where ninga enna enna pandringa na vandu eludranga eluthaalra irukke what do you do i am a writer so what do you do for a living you know that's the yeah. next question you yeah, remember saapadu enna pandringa so banu rao also almost asked you the same question you know repeatedly so what do you do for a living uh, it's in a way happy that you know uh, i think it's majid majidi you know majid majidi school where uh, film school i believe if you want to join there are three conditions uh, one of the conditions was very fascinating in the sense that uh, everyone needs to spend an hour or so swimming you know for a film school they have to compulsorily do swimming so and why swimming because if you want to make good films which means you know you are not going to you, you should not be making compromises which means you should not be looking at large funds you know funds they with very little limited money you are going to make the film where you have to be everywhere you know the director will have to carry the lights he has to have the strength to carry the lights and if you are going on a uh, to distant places uh, climbing mountains the director should be director cameraman they should be able to carry all the equipments you know you don't take an assistant which will cost money so that way i think you know if you if i look at you you know you are all rolled into one director cameraman uh, editor i think a number of things are rolled into one uh, that's interesting but now i'll open uh, pinson has a question i'll just post the question uh, must we look at docus like yours the way we must look at artist work like that of a chawan bhagwan chawan that's what he's asking even in fact i also had the feeling you know uh, yours is very arty in the sense there is a sense of it's, it's very uh, in documentary film making there are different genres i mean you did show anand padwardhan you have made a film in the sun hamara and him and he calls himself as an activist filmmaker rightly so he had a great influence on me i was simply zapped on his uh, uh, ramke na you know that was a but uh, that is a different genre of documentary filmmaking but yours is kind of you know it, that's why you know you probably named it as impressionistic and which is what probably uh, vincent is asking but if you can elaborate on that that would be nice yeah vincent yeah but uh, i don't know that it's a very difficult question i can answer you just have to see the film uh, in your own perspective there is no other conditions at all uh, i would i will definitely not claim as my my film making as art in the category of art or uh, abstract or nothing like that you know it is it is just that you set you chose a different kind of parameters to make the film and so it looks different uh, but it is essentially documentary film making it is uh but how you build a structure is uh, is where you are playing around with you know and you are going by what your instinct tells you and not what the previous works of other people tells you so you're not you're not going by any reference points uh, of how to make a documentary film or what is a documentary film none of those you go by you heard all that you've seen all that and you are also seeing all the time you're seeing other films made by other filmmakers or friends of mine uh but then when i come up with an idea which is looking different which is flowing differently i have to follow only that so that's what that is true to anybody i think uh, even in your case the way you started your newspaper uh, adaya times which is one of my favorite newspaper in this area uh, so i mean it is it is a uh, what intuitively you can do within a certain kind of parameters that you have it is like giving a child say a palette of colors and say do something with it and that whatever that child comes up is is the truth is that that is the art and that is that is information that is expression so name whatever you want to so uh, even when i'm working with my students i do the same thing in the sense that i tell them that discover a language for yourself don't go by in that is said behind before you there are no rules 
you learn the rules but break it again you know so whatever looks correct for example you know uh, when i joined the film institute um, there was this photography classes i was already a photographer before i joined the institute and i was feeling like oh god what you know i'm with a lot of students who were just new to all this and well i already have a background with this and i there was a, a girl uh, who was part of the class and her name was shobha and uh, in the dark room when we used to print uh, we used to from negatives to bromide prints we will do printing she will bring out a print which was looking extremely contrasty or over over exposed or bleached and i will tell her that no this is uh, the exposure is not correct you have to give a different kind of exposure and maybe use the chemicals slightly longer or whatever to get a correct tone the tonalities and she will say that no i like it like this first i thought like it is she is being adamant and uh, she is not accepting that something else can be done or she is not taking a suggestion from me but you know in a few days actually i actually realized that what she says is correct that that image is correct for her from her mindset from her position as whatever she is that is a correct image I mean, which is now i am doing now in the sense I mean, what i learned from her at that time i am doing it now in the sense that that you, you what you said out of focus and amateur kind of camera work and whatever i mean it is not like consciously i'm trying to do that but you the effort to frame a shot the effort to take a shot becomes a, a narrative in itself you know and so the the what is the correct way of doing something the correct way of line line drawing or the kind of the applying everything is pushed in in art circles in the, they've gone leaps and leaps ahead you know in the sense that but in film making actually we have not gone much ahead at all we are stuck in one format and we think this is what documentary is this is what the film making should be like this is what the commercial film is we are stuck we have to move leaps and bounds in terms of form and structure questioning everything i think i think that's what one is trying to do and i'm doing it in a very small level very very small level it's not very big Okay, Arun Praka, we have come to the end of the session. Arun Praka has a question. Uh, are you going to make a sequel, like say, Niyenge? Uh, have you given a thought about it, of your films? Yeah, I have been thinking about it, but I have not found a way as yet. Yeah, but I am in touch with all of these people. Yeah, Arun also was one of the person who was part of the whole thing here in the last time. We screened the film in Delhi and other places. So, he was there. yeah. Yeah, thanks, Asha. Thank you. So with this, uh, we come to the end of the session. Ramani has more films to show. Uh, in fact, uh, oh, it is Banu, which is available on Vimeo. We have posted it. So it will be there till... Uh, yeah, you want to say? Tonight. Yeah, till tonight it's available. Till tonight it is available. Uh, probably, you know, Ramani's retrospective happens in many other film festivals also. We will have a retrospective probably once this uh, COVID pandemic is over. Uh, so thank you all for logging in. Um, thank you, Ramani, for taking the time. And I know that you are busy working and in between, you know, you took time to cut clips and get ready for the thing. I'm really sorry that I couldn't uh, give you time to show all the clips. I mean, there are a lot more interesting clips than no. you did. I mean, whoa, it's Banu that has been missing. Um, but many more clips are there. But hopefully we'll have another time and uh, people will get to see your retrospective whenever it happens. So thank you all for joining this interesting session. And tomorrow, look forward to seeing you at another interesting session on fake news as fact during the COVID times. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.